Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am excited to show you how to create your own versatile pen testing device called the Ghost Link. It can perform Wi Fi jamming, wireless bad USB attacks, and key logging, and more. And the best part, this project is entirely open source and available on GitHub for you to download and try it out yourself. Let's get started. Before we dive into the project, I want to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. JLC PCB is a trusted name in PCB manufacturing, offering PCB fabrications and assembly starting at just $2. And if you are new to JLC PCB, you can sign up today and get a $60 coupon. So check out the link in the description and take the advantage of the offer. Look at the precision and the quality of these PCBs. The soldering points are clean and the overall design looks professional. These PCBs are essential for a project like Ghost Link and JLC PCB makes it super easy to get started with your own design. Let me quickly show you how you can order your own PCB. First, upload your grabber files, customize your board options and place the order. Yes, it's that simple and the results are professional great. If you are working on an electronic project, you really need to try JLC PCB. Now that we have our custom PCB ready, let's look at the components that you will need to complete this Ghost Link device. First of all, we have Node MCO based on ESP 826's microcontroller and as you can see, I have connected an external antenna over here. So all the connections are given in my GitHub link, so just go to the description and click on the link and you'll be redirected to my repository of GitHub and from there you can just easily make the hardware changes or hardware soldering points and all the descriptions are given in my guitar link so quickly visit that so if you want to use an external antenna and up next we have 1.3 inch i2c oled display and one more tip i want to give over here is this before buying any display of 1.3 inch you should make sure the vcc and gnd arrangements are correctly given because there are displays where gnd come first then the vcc pin is there so you should keep in mind that the display that will work on this pcb should have the vcc pin first pin and then the second pin should be gnd so keep this thing in mind before buying any display for this pcb and then we have neopixel the neopixel indicates the mode in which this device is currently operating and up next we have a pro micro board so this pro micro board is used for bad usb or wireless bad usb and key logger and different types of different programs can be programmed into this pro micro board and up next we have our power management ic this ic is used to power all the components connected to this pcb and also to charge the batteries that are connected into this pcb so this is the very crucial part of this whole pcb board so you should make this connection very carefully and beside that we have our type c port to power the power management ic so that it can charge the battery after that we need two deep switches to set this device into different modes you can push these buttons to set this device into different modes and then we will need six tactile switches so these tactile switches are used to navigate between different options and this one like a navigation buttons of this device and underneath this pcb we have our usb a port and a 5 volt fan to keep all the components cool and two jst cables will be needed to connect the fan and the battery to the pcb and over here i have used 3.7 volt 1300 mah batteries to power this pcb or this host link device so that's all the components that we will be needing once you have all the components and your custom pcb from jlc pcb you are ready to start building once all the components are soldered and connected your ghost link device will look like this ready for programming and testing first head to the github repository linked in the description and download the zip file once the download is complete, extract the file and you will find folder containing all the codes needed in the Wi-Fi Jammer project. Inside the extracted folder, navigate to the ESP8266 dauthor directory. Look for the ESP8266 dauthor.ino file and double click it. It will automatically open the Arduino IDE and all the required files and dependency will load into the IDE. Next, let's configure the ID settings. Go to the file menu and select preference. In the preference window, you will see a field to add URLs from the additional board manager. Copy the link provided in the video description and paste it in this field. Click OK and the ID will update the necessary board definitions. Now go to the tool menu and open the board manager. Search and select the dauthor 8 ESP8266 board. After selecting that, choose generic ESP8266 as specific board. Next, go into the dauthor config section and select Hackeld Vega. Make sure all the settings match with the one displayed on the screen right now. Double click and double check everything and ensure that no mistakes or mismatches are there. Once the settings are configured, click the verify button and compile the code. After it compiles successfully, connect the ESP8266 microcontroller to your computer and make sure the driver for ESP8266 microcontroller is already installed in your computer. The installation process will automatically begin transferring the code into the microcontroller. 
Once the upload is complete, your Node MCU is programmed and ready to go. You have successfully installed the software for the Wi-Fi jammer. As you can see, this device is fully operational. The OLED display shows the status of this device and with the help of the deep switches and tactile switches, I can toggle between different modes. For this demo, I will activate the Wi-Fi jammer. The device can for the nearby Wi-Fi network which are displayed over here. Once I select the network I want to target, here is the test Wi-Fi network I am set up for this demonstration. Notice that as soon as I activate the Wi-Fi jammer, the connection of my phone drops completely and the network becomes unavailable. Quick reminder, this device is strictly for educational purpose only. Always use it responsibly only on the networks and devices that you own. Unauthorized use can lead to legal consequences and the main purpose of building this device is to test your Wi-Fi network. Because this device doesn't work with WPA3 or the new versions of the Wi-Fi that are coming in the market. It works only on the network old network routers. So for this reason, we should always keep our devices updated and so that we do not get into trouble from this type of device. Deactivating the jammer is just as simple with with the push away button, the device stops transmitting the deauthentication packets and the network is restored. That's the power of Ghost Link. With the additional features like wireless bad USB and key logging, this device is a versatile tool for learning your cyber security and pen testing. And that's it for today's video. We have successfully built and tested the Wi Fi jamming mode of the Ghost Link device. This is just one of the many exciting features of this project. In the next video, I will dive into the different modes of this device and show you how they work and how you can implement them in your ghostling device. So make sure you have subscribed with the bell icon turned on so that you do not miss out. A huge thanks to JLCBCV once again for sponsoring this project. Don't forget to check them out for your PCB need. High quality board starting at just $2 plus $60 coupon for new users. Use the link in the description below to get started. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, share it with your friends and let me know your thoughts in the comment. See you in the next video.